Welcome back to Introduction to Programming using C++. My name is Alex Louie. Today we're going to talk about if statements. Uh, specifically, I'm going to go over the one-way if. Next few videos, we're going to go over two-way ifs, ifs, extended ifs, if-else, and how they react. In this particular code example, what I've done is I've declared two variables value 1, value 2 of integer value, of integer type. So how does an if statement behave? Well, the if statement will have this as something called a conditional expression. So whatever you put between these parentheses must always return one of two values. It's either going to return a true or it's going to return a false. If you don't know how to evaluate relational expressions or logical expressions or a mix, please go to my videos on relational operators and logical operators. As we've seen previously, we have to evaluate this particular expression and in combination with the if, it will hit the action here. For example, we asked the question if value one is value one greater than value two is value one greater than value two no it's not so that means that this action will never get hit so if I go to execute compile and run nothing happens okay if I reverse the sign and I did that and I go to execute compile and run then we do have the sum action printed out why because in this particular case this evaluated to true since this evaluates to true then the rules of an if statement are if this expression evaluates to true then you're gonna hit the action okay there are many ways to write an if statement this is the first way in this way you're always you, you're limited to having one action per your if statement means that if I want to put more actions here I can't unless I do a compound statement which I can enclose in braces which is going to be our next example okay so this is a one-way if with one action and here I don't have any compound statements I only have one action and this is perfectly correct syntax okay next example is something called a still a one-way if but what we're doing is we are going to see if we can execute multiple actions in the body using a compound statement notice how my indentations are lined up right underneath each other as formatting styles behavior we take the expression if this expression evaluates to true then we will hit the body if not meaning this will return a false then there is really nothing to do and it will skip this block of compound statements in this particular example if is value 1 greater than value 2 no it's not so nothing is going to print out and there you go nothing printed out if I do value 1 is less than value 2 this expression will evaluate to true which means that now we're gonna hit our multiple our body of your if statement you can have many lines in a compound statement it doesn't necessarily have to be two you can have three four five and so on so if I execute compile and run then you have multiple actions in action two and a C out. Okay. And within an if statement, you can have an, another if statement within here in the body. Okay. You're not limited to a certain amount of C syntax. You can use anything, anything here. It's just part of your code. Okay. Next example is we are actually going to mix relational and logical expressions 
in the actual if expression section of the if statement. So in this particular example, we have a one line action, so we don't need the compound statement brackets. And we, we're going to have to evaluate this expression to either be true or false. Okay, obviously the compiler will do that, but for your understanding, you have to evaluate it, so make sure that you, it, is, it is making sense. In this particular example, if you were going to evaluate manually, you have to know your order of precedence and your associativity. Okay, so we know that this ands and equals are usually pretty far down on the order of precedence tree. Okay, if I whip out my order of precedence um, paper, okay, and this goes back to the previous lectures that I've had on relational operators, we can see that the first thing that should get evaluated is the greater than. And then after the greater than, you're going to have the equal to and then the and according to the precedence here. So if we're going to do the relational first, it's going to ask, is value 1 greater than value 2? This will return a false. Next is the is equal to. So is value 1 equal to 10? That's going to return a true. False and true will give you false. Okay. So if I execute this, nothing will actually be printed. Okay. If I flip the sign, however, this should actually print out some action. And there we go. So as you can see, the if statement is a very powerful statement because now here you can test for validity. Again, we're always going to get a true or false value from this expression. You got to make sure that this is always going to return a true or false value. You will be the one writing the if statements, not the computer. And when you write your if statements, you got to make sure that whatever expression you write in here is eventually going to return a true or false value. Because if it returns a true, it will evaluate and hit the body. Otherwise, it will just go through and skip the body altogether. Next example is a mix of arithmetic and logical expressions. Now, even though I have an arithmetic expression here, because of this expressions, it will eventually evaluate to a true or false value. Okay? It will eventually evaluate to a true or false value. So, if I was going to evaluate this, again, I have to go back to my order of precedence. Well, who goes first? Well, parentheses actually goes first. So parentheses will get evaluated. Value 2 plus 10, which is 15 plus 10, that will give you 25. Is 25 greater than or equal to 20? And that's actually true. And then we will go to this one. And actually, I'm doing it the wrong way. We should actually evaluate this first and then the result of this and that. Because remember, the associativity starts in the left. Okay? Oh, actually, no, that's not true. They're actually the precedence. The precedence of the greater than is greater than the greater than or equal to. So if we were just trying to figure out who's getting evaluated first and second, we'd actually go into the greater than, this will get evaluated first, and then this will get evaluated second. But at the time that this gets evaluated, this has already been computed. Okay, So is value 1 greater than value 2? That's a false. And this is a true. So false and true will give you false. 
because this whole thing returned a false, it will not enter the body of the if statement. Okay. Now, if I flip that around, okay, then that should actually hit my compound statement, my body of the if statement. Okay. So the examples here are for a simple one way if with two ways to write it, one being with just one line of action or two being with multiple lines of action. Remember that if you have multiple lines of action, you have to use compound statement brackets in between the actions. If you have one line of action, then just, just do an indentation uh, right underneath your if statement. Also important point is that remember the expression within your if statement must return a true or a false or you will get a syntax error. Thanks for listening. Hopefully I'll see you in the next video where, I, where I'm going to go over uh, two-way ifs.